on the check ride, you're going to be the one that chooses your checkpoints. So you're going to already know your distances involved. Okay, so you'll have this. You already have an idea how fast that airplane's going to go. So if you know it's going to be 12 miles and you think your airplane's going to do 100, you would already have it set up as though that's what it came out. And now you're looking at that. That 12 miles should take me about seven and a half minutes. And if it doesn't take me uh, seven, if it doesn't, it takes me more or less than that, then I know I'm going to have to adjust this. But I can already have it, I can already have it preset to what I expect it to be. And then these numbers are going to fall into place. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, so on the check ride, there shouldn't be any real surprises. I hate it when I get on a check ride and somebody's over here and it's like their first time they've ever seen this thing. <laughs> yeah. Because it's kind of like, okay, I'm telling you now, you will have to show me that you can do this on the check ride. You can use an electronic one, but you better know how to use it. Mm -hmm. This one is actually easier because you can have it already set up the way you want it. You know where everything's going to be. Okay, so it's as simple as that. You just, uh, if... If we know my airplane basically does 110, so I put the 60 on the 110, and I want to know how long at that speed would it take me to go to, say, Albuquerque. And if I told you Albuquerque is, yeah, we'll call it 420 miles. Okay, I don't know that, but uh, so we come over here and we find the 420, and here's 400, 10, 20, and so that's going to take me three hours and 20, I'm sorry, three hours and 50 minutes. Okay, now, do I want to fly for three hours and 50 minutes in this airplane? Maybe not. If I've got four hours fuel on board, this is a bad plan. If I've got five hours fuel on board, this could be doable. But, if I encounter a headwind, now all of a sudden, I can, you know, I can at three, three hours and 50 minutes could run, you know, wouldn't be hard to imagine it going to four and a half hours. And so now I'm looking at that. Now, this is really good to do these time speed problems and you do them early because when you get that last hundred miles between here and Albuquerque, your choices of where you're going to stop for fuel are extremely limited. There's just not much out there. So, uh, if I stop early, if I'm going to stop at the halfway point, now I can do some thinking. I can look at my iPad and I can stop at Lubbock and pay $7 a gallon for fuel. Or I can stop at Plainview and pay $4.90 a gallon for fuel. Or I can make it almost to Amarillo and pay God knows what when I land on the highway. <laughs> So I don't want to land on the highway. I would much rather pay $7 a gallon. But when I get close to Albuquerque, I run out of choices of airports, and I might have to land in an airport that doesn't have fuel available. And it's still going to be cheaper to find somebody that will put five-gallon cans in a truck and bring me fuel than it is going to be to make an off-airport landing. Okay, so sometimes we have to make some hard choices, but if we plan correctly, they become easy choices. And Plainview's got cheap fuel. It's not that far out of my way. Breaks up a trip. Let's stop and get some of that cheap fuel in, in Plainview. And we don't have a fuel issue. We minimize, you know, so like I say, we just make some smart, smart choices. They'll even give you a courtesy car and you can go get lunch. So, like I say, it makes some smart choices. The next part of it is, is the, uh, uh,